Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use the UMG grid. For this example, I've created a normal user interface widget and I've added a grid panel to it. Under the grid panel, I've added three small colored images that we will use for our example. I've sized our grid panel to 900 by 900 so that way the math parts are easier later on. Our grid panel itself only contains two actual options. The grid slot itself is where the majority of our values are at. So let's go ahead and move these images around. Let's move our second image over one row and down one row where you can notice you can use the convenient arrows. Or our third one, for example, let's put it in column two and row two. Grids are zero based elements. Zero will be the top left. The next one will be one, two, three to the end. Now you notice it's not filling our entire grid panel because we have our grid panel set to one size and our content itself is set to other sizes, 64 by 64. If we take our grid panel and we set size to content, you'll notice it will shrink down. Now let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and take our grid panel and we will set up our column fill values. If we change each of these to one, this will adjust our weighting for each of these to basically be 100%. They're they are all equal values, so it will weight them equally and it will divide the 900 by 900 equally. So 300 by 300, 300 by 300, 300 by 300. And this is of course just because we have our alignment set to fill. If we were to set them to centered or left aligned or top aligned, they'd follow the normal alignment rules. So this is a handy way of giving certain columns or rows weight. Let's make our middle column beefier. Let's make it a weight of three. You'll notice this will make it wider. Our column is now three times more important than any other column because they have weights of one. So we'll stick with that. Let's go into our actual images itself. Our grid slots have our alignments like normal, our rows which we have covered, and then row spans. Row span determined from the starting point across columns or down rows how far it goes in addition to the starting point. For spanning, zero and one are the same. Let's say we want to make this top left box go to the far right, we're going to span one, two, three columns. Let's go to column span, change it to three, and then our pink box spans all the way across. It's a very handy feature if you want to give something a certain amount of weight or not be the same size as other things. Let's set this back to zero, for example. Let's take our middle box and let's adjust this up to the top and let's make our column row, let's make our row span three. This will bring it down and now we have a middle block. Let's take our top pink one and let's make its column span back to two and you'll notice we have a problem. You can't see that pink block behind the blue block. Well, drawing order is determined in the order of images here with the top ones being drawn first and then the next one, the next one. If we want the pink block to be above the blue block, we would take the pink block and we would drag it and now it's physically in the order where blue is drawn first, pink is drawn second, and then green is drawn third. So that's how you would rearrange things if they have an overlap. Now, we have our layers. Layers determine where things are hit and offsets and things like that. When you have things overlapping, just be sure to set a higher layer for the things you want to be hit first. Nudge. Well, let's say, for example, this green block we want moved over to the left a little bit, let's say negative 50, and you'll notice nothing happens. Well, nudge doesn't work until you compile. Once you compile, it redraws and it will nudge it over. It's still considered in the third column. However, it's simply drawn, nudged over to the left 50 pixels. It could be handy for offsetting things or just, you know, it's a user interface. Make it pretty. That covers how do I use the UMG grid. You'll notice that the UMG grid is helpful and handy for simple things that you want to keep in a grid fashion. 
but it has a few overrides that make it nice for making different things. A good example is you can make a checkerboard or a chessboard or maybe a very easy tic-tac-toe board simply by filling in images in each of those grids.